to the hip hop. The hip to the hip and the hip hip hop. But you don't stop rocking to the bang bang. The boogie say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. A skittle of bebop, we rock a Scooby Doo. And guess what, America, we love you. Well, 'Cause you're rocking and roll with us so much so you can rock to your hundred and one years old. I don't mean to brag, I don't mean to boast, but we're like hot butter on a breakfast toast. Hi, and welcome to this paper presentation about product placement in rap music song lyrics. My name is Denise Shackleford. I am an assistant professor in the College of Media and Entertainment at Middle Tennessee State University, where I teach in the recording industry department. The clip of the song you just heard is uh, probably familiar to most of you, but that's Sugar Hill Gang with Rapper's Delight. And that is the first rap song to receive widespread airplay in the U.S. In a moment, I, I will talk briefly about the history of rap music. But first, I wanted to share a bit more about this study. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to collaborate with a couple of other MTSU faculty members, uh, Dr. Ben Stickle, who is an associate professor of criminal justice administration, and Dr. Trisha Farwell, an associate professor in the School of Journalism. In the study, we sought to answer three main questions. First, whether the number of brand mentions or product placements in rap music song lyrics has increased or decreased between 2006 and 2020. Which brand categories were most dominant? And then within those categories, which subcategories were mentioned most often? To do this, we utilized the billboard hot rap songs chart and identified the top 25 rap songs for each year um, from 2006 to 2020. Um, once we had identified those songs, we then used the azlyrics.com website to review the lyrics for each of the songs and code the brand mentions in those songs accordingly. We commonly refer to rap and hip hop interchangeably as the genre of music, but rap is actually one of the four elements of the hip hop culture, along with DJing, graffiti art, and breakdancing. For purposes of this study, though, and for today's presentation, we will be referring to uh, rap and hip hop as the music genre and using them interchangeably. So Raps gets its start in 1973 or thereabout in uh, the Bronx in New York City. Um, it, a gentleman named Clive Campbell, better known as DJ Cool Herc, uh, threw a party for his little sister in one of the empty buildings in his neighborhood. And uh, from that, the hip hop culture began. In fact, this location is on the historic registry in New York as the birthplace of hip hop. Fast forward a few years and uh, one of the first big hip hop tours, the Fresh Fest was uh, touring and selling out. And then in 2018, um, rap music was deemed the fastest growing and most popular music genre and accounted for about 25% of all music consumption. My That was My Adidas by Run DMC and is one of the earlier examples of product placement in a song. Um, you'll notice in the photo that the band's wearing um, Adidas sneakers. This was an artistic choice initially. This was just a brand that they liked and they included it or wrote the song and included it in there. Um, However, their manager, uh, being a smart artist manager, brought the executive from my from Adidas to one of their shows. And when the executive saw the crowd holding holding up their uh, Adidas sneakers during the song and singing along, it, it ultimately led to an endorsement deal for Run DMC. 
Another um, product placement worthy of note. Um, this time it's it's an actual campaign for a product, uh, Sprite's Obey Your Thirst campaign, which ran from 1993 all the way to 2019. Pictured here is um, Criss Cross, a rap duo from the early 90s. Uh, they were one of the first and one of many rap artists featured in the Obey Your Thirst campaign. In 2001, uh, Busta Rhymes had a hit with Pascal Cavassier, and like Run DMC, this was an artistic choice for the artist, but ultimately it led to a, a deal because the brand saw its sales increase significantly uh, when the song was uh, played. This leads me to one of our limitations of the study. Uh, because uh, deals between brands and artists are often confidential, there is not a ready source of this information. Therefore, much of the specificity with regard to um, the amounts artists are paid, which endorsements are paid, and which ones are just artistic choice is not uh, is not available. So uh, that is a limitation of this study that we recognize, but there is some anecdotal information which I will share. In quantifying the data, we used a twofold method. First, we looked at each of the songs from each of those 15 years and counted whether or not it mentioned a brand. Uh, one song mentioning a brand equaled one case. So we quantified as cases, and then we also quantified as code count. Um, whenever a brand category was mentioned in a song, each time it was mentioned, it was logged as one code count or one code. Um, so a song that, that used a brand's name multiple times was coded, was counted multiple times as a code. We were able to identify five main categories um, of brand uh, and product placement in rap music songs, travel and destination, transportation, fashion, entertainment, and food and non-alcoholic beverages. We chose to exclude alcoholic beverages from this study and plan to look at it in a separate study. Uh, within the travel and destination category, which was our top category, uh, cities were mentioned 55% of the time and by far the, the largest category. Uh, states were mentioned, countries were mentioned, and venues. And in this case, we are um, using the term venue broader than a performance venue. We use this to include any sort of uh, location, establishment, et cetera. Um, for instance, we coded songs uh, that referenced Wimbledon, that referenced Broadway, um, th those sorts of things, the YMCA, all of those kinds of mentions we coded within travel and destination as a venue. The top um, year for travel and destination count was within cities, and that was 2007. Cities has been the top category uh, for all but one year, where it was tied with another category. Um, but you can see the spike was clearly in 2007. Next up in our study was transportation. Um, I should mention that this is not consistent with some of the other earlier studies. Uh, those studies found transportation was the dominant category, um, unlike ours, which found that travel and destination was. However, uh, transportation did find sport and luxury cars uh, were by far the most mentioned sub-brand. Some other automobile types were mentioned and some other forms of transportation, but mainly this luxury sport automobile was by far the most mentioned. You can see here that the line for um, sport and luxury cars is clearly above all of the rest of the categories. And then you see a huge spike in 2016, 17, and 18. Uh, this is due in part by designer song Panda. Panda refers not to the bear, but to a BMW X6, and therefore we coded it accordingly. So, um, BMW 
saw a, uh, saw some increases in sales during this time. It was effective as far as um, a correlation anyway to the impact on sales, but the spike in the count was due primarily to the multiple mentions in the song Panda um, of the BMW. Next up is fashion. Fashion category um, was split more evenly, unlike the two prior categories, with shoes and clothes being the most mentioned. Um, accessories, uh, jewelry also mentioned, and then an other category. Other in this case was when a fashion brand was mentioned, but a specific item type was not. Because these categories were, uh, these subcategories were so even, um, the count by year shows them multi multiple spikes. Uh, the other category it was peaked in uh, 2010. Uh, in 2012, clothing, uh, number one being Gucci, peaked with 14. And 2014, um, Jordan shoes peaked. And in 2018, Rolex watches. Next up, we have entertainment and like fashion, it's a little more evenly split. Uh, the top subcategory was movie and TVs. However, if you look at tech, physical and software combined, that's actually the largest category. But we split them up and, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Then the uh, next category is uh the other category, and this was all other types of entertainment, from Bonnaroo being mentioned to Cirque du Soleil to, um, you know, just other, other types of entertainment festivals and so forth. Um, sports was also mentioned 19% of the time. As I was just saying, uh, tech hardware and tech software were coded separately. And the reason is you can clearly see there was a spike in 2011 in references to tech hardware, um, things like iPhone. And then in 2015, there was a spike of mentions of tech software. Those included Google Maps, Instagram, FaceTime. Um, this is probably not that surprising considering how uh, social media applications are used so widely among a younger demographic and an older demographic too, but it's just so prevalent in our, in our society today. Lastly, we looked at food and beverage, and I want to remind you this is non-alcoholic beverages. Um, food was by far the dominant of these two uh, subcategories. This included everything from Orville Redenbacher popcorn, vanilla wafers, uh, to Lucky Charms. Um, in the beverage, the non-alcoholic beverage category, uh, Jamba Juice, uh, Sprite, uh, Dasani Water, and uh, Red Bull were all mentioned. Um, again, this category uh, was the least referenced. Uh, foods uh, peak year came in 2006, the first year of our study. Uh, the beverage category has uh, stayed pretty low. And in the years 16, 17, and 19, you see that it was hovering about two. So what does all of this tell us? Well, let's go back to our questions. Our first question was whether brand mentions and rap song lyrics had increased or decreased over the period of time we looked at in the study. And the answer is that it is increased and it's increased by 45%. In 2006, there were 51 mentions of products in rap songs. In 2020, there were 74. Not necessarily a huge increase, but I think an increase worth mentioning. Um, and there were certainly some years that that it spiked much, much higher than that, um, such as 2018, when there were 123 mentions of products and rap songs. Our next question asks which categories were mo most dominant. And as I mentioned a moment ago, there were five categories that we identified. 
The number one category we identified was travel and destination with 166 cases and 399 mentions. So in the 166 songs of the 375 songs we reviewed, 166 of them uh, mentioned some brand or product and that mention occurred 399 times. I was followed by transportation with 157 of the 375 songs mentioning some transportation product and that mention occurring 343 times. And then by fashion with 150 songs with mentions occurring 334 times. And finally, uh, we looked at the subcategories within each brand category. And when you look at this, you can see that sports and luxury cars are still very prevalent in rap music song lyrics. Um, they were prevalent in both cases and counts across sub brand categories. Um, that was followed by cities and then clothing. So, what are our key takeaways? Well, as I just said, there's definitely been an increase. So there are more products being included in songs than there had been in the past. Um, on average, again, there have been spikes. There have been years when there have been dramatically larger numbers than we saw in 2020, but the, the increase has been consistent. We have not seen a year lower than 64 counts since the very first year of the study, which was 51. Second, um, as I mentioned, there is a uh, in inconsistency between other studies and our study in that we saw travel and destinations referenced most often, while other studies have um, seen transportation or fashion referenced most often. Um, one possible reason for this is a younger demographic is uh, more in, interested in and engaged in experiences versus material possessions. Uh, but that, again, is just a possible, but is a possible further study that could be, uh, could be addressed. Um, software over hardware, again, not a big surprise because culturally we are so, um, applications and use of software is very much part of our culture. And um, sports and luxury cars still remaining up there as one of the dominant categories. Um, and then it is difficult to connect brand sales directly to use of brand in the song lyrics. There is a correlation. And um, I mentioned Designers Panda. Uh, they sold in the month that Panda was number one. They sold about 200 more BMW X6s than they had the same month the year prior. Again, though, is it causation or correlation? So that's a dip, that's difficult to uh, be able to to quantify here. Well, thank you for viewing this study and uh, this presentation here with me. And um, I look forward to hearing from you and speaking with you should you have any questions. Thanks. <laughs>